There's a huge problem with a major impact on basically all next-gen CPUs, GPUs and every other type of computer chip and it has the potential to completely alter the development and design of semiconductors as a whole. It's affecting every company from AMD and Nvidia to Apple and even Intel. No one is safe. We just got confirmation that Astrum cells stop scaling. If you're now wondering what the heck Astrum is and why it's so important, I've got you covered. In this video, we will take a look at what Astrum does and why it's approaching death has massive implications for the entire chip industry and the future of PC hardware. SRAM, short for Static Random Access Memory, is a type of memory cell not unlike DRAM, which is used in your computer's main system memory and what most people would simply call RAM. But SRAM is much faster than DRAM and the preferred memory type for any kind of low-level cache on computer chips. Any modern CPU or GPU uses a cache system where the most important data is stored on the chip itself, right next to the CPU or GPU cores, so they have blazing fast access to the information needed for upcoming calculations. Anything that doesn't need to be accessed that quickly is stored on the much larger, much cheaper, but also much slower system memory. And because SRAM cache is located directly on the chip itself, it's also manufactured in the same process node as the chip. Apple's latest A16 chip, for example, is produced in TSMC's 4 nanometer node, and so is the cache on the A16. Nvidia's new RTX 40 GPUs are also produced using TSMC's 4 nanometer node, and so is the huge amount of cache on those GPUs. AMD's new Ryzen 7000 GPUs are again produced by TSMC on a 5 nanometer process, and they also include a large amount of 5 nanometer SRAM cells. And while Intel still uses their own manufacturing process, they also include a lot of SRAM based cache on their CPUs. But why is the scaling of SRAM so important? Ever since the invention of silicon-based semiconductor chips, production process nodes have gotten smaller and smaller. That way, modern chips can use more and more transistors while keeping their small size, which allows for faster chips and is important to keep costs down. But over the past years, it has become apparent that not all parts of the computer chip continue getting smaller at the same rate. While the logic of the CPU and GPU still scales very well, even to this day, SRAM cells have long started to lag behind the scaling of the rest of the chip. At first, logic density increased by a factor of 2x and SRAM scaled only by 1.9x. Then the disparity started to grow and with recent process nodes, it wasn't uncommon to see only a 1.2 to 1.35x SRAM scaling, while logic transistors still improved at 1.7x or higher. This has led to a point where SRAM-based cache is consuming a disproportionately large area of any modern computer chip just because it has lagged behind in scaling for so long. And now, for the first time ever, it looks like TSMC's new 3 nanometer node will offer zero density improvement compared to current 5 nanometer nodes. That means the size of an SRAM cell won't shrink when using TSMC's upcoming M3E process node. This news comes at basically the worst time ever because just recently all modern high-performance chips have started to implement increasingly larger SRAM-based cache systems into their design. AMD's first-gen Ryzen CPUs in 2017 had a maximum of 4 MB L2 and 60 MB L3 cache. A new Ryzen 7000 CPU has up to 60 MB L2 and 64 MB L3 cache. Intel's most recent Raptor Lake CPUs are another great example. The main difference between the new Raptor Lake design and last year's Alder Lake is the amount of cache. Raptor Lake more than doubles the L2 cache and increases the L3 cache by another 20%. It gets even crazier when we take a look at Nvidia's RTX 40 Lovelace GPUs. While a RTX 3090 Ti has only 6 MB of L2 cache, the RTX 4090 has a whopping 72 MB. That's a 12x increase in L2 cache. This trend is visible in basically every CPU or GPU design. Apple's A and M SOCs are also using larger amounts of cache. And with the exception of Intel, all these companies rely on TSMC to manufacture their chips. Nvidia's next-gen Blackwell GPUs will most likely use TSMC's M3E process node. With literally zero SRAM scaling and a need for even more cache, the chips will become much larger and thus a lot more expensive to produce. Same with Zen 5 on a possible 3 nanometer node. Apple's A17 and M3 SoCs, which are rumored to use a N3 variant, also face the same problem. With little to no SRAM scaling, Apple either has to stop increasing the amount of cache 
or swallow the bitter pill and produce even larger silicon dyes. And if you think Intel is in the clear because they are not using TSMC as a manufacturer, I've got bad news for you. First, Intel's own process nodes are suffering the same fate regarding the scaling of ASRAM cells. It's not a TSMC problem, it's a physics problem. ASRAM cells are very delicate and their building blocks are often designed by hand. They just can't get any smaller without risking their functionality. And second, not only are Intel's Arc TPUs produced by TSMC, but their upcoming Meteor Lake TPUs will also use parts manufactured by TSMC. It really seems like a dead end. Modern chips need more and more cash. But not only has ASRAM scaling slowed down over the past years, it seems to have come to a complete stop. But isn't there anything that can be done about it? Great question, so glad you asked. There's a reason I didn't mention AMD's latest Arden A3 GPUs and the Ryzen 7 5800X3D or AMD's upcoming Zen 4 variants that use 3D recache. Because chiplets can be one of the solutions to combat the stagnation of ASRAM scaling. To be honest, it doesn't really solve the problem, it's more of a smart workaround to counter the number one problem, rising manufacturing costs. Older process nodes are not only more mature and thus easier to manufacture, they are also much cheaper. And if new bleeding edge nodes don't offer any benefits regarding the size of ASRAM cells, it would be super clever to just produce all the cash in an older node, wouldn't it? If only there wasn't a problem that there are parts of a CPU or GPU that you want to manufacture in the best nodes available, because it's full of logic transistors that still scale well and benefit from higher clock speeds and lower power consumption. The solution is to split off the cache and other parts of the chip that don't scale well with new nodes, produce them in an older and cheaper process node, and then add the parts together with fancy packaging. That's exactly what AMD is doing with the new RX 7900 XTX and XT GPUs. These graphics cards consist of one large chip that contains all the GPU cores and other logic units, and up to six tiny chips that only hold cache and the memory interface, which is an analog design and scales equally bad as SRAM. The smart part is that the important main chiplet, the so-called graphics compute dime, is manufactured in a bleeding edge 5 nanometer process, while the small memory cache dies are produced in an older and cheaper 6 nanometer node. And since cache and the analog interface don't scale well, but are cheaper to produce on the older node, it's a cost advantage. It's a similar concept with AMD's 3D Vcache, first seen on Zen 3D, and the Ryzen 7 5800X3D. Here AMD is using the same 7 nanometer process for both the CPU chiplet and the cache chiplet, but that was just a proof of concept. You can bet that once AMD CPUs are on more modern node with zero SRAM scaling, like TSMC's N3E, the cache chiplet for the 3D Vcache will be produced in an older process node. And AMD isn't the only company working on chiplets. Intel's next-gen Meteor Lake will split up the CPU into different chiplets. It might take Intel another generation to go there, but it's already being developed. And with the knowledge you just gained, I'm sure you can see why it's not only likely, but almost certain that Nvidia and Apple are also working on implementing chiplet design into their future products. With the impending death of SRAM scaling, it's not really a choice, but the only feasible way to produce competitive chips in the future. There are other possible solutions being worked on, mostly different types of memory cells that might still allow further scaling, but there isn't a clear successor to SRAM in sight. It's do or die, and the future clearly belongs to chiplets. Now you know why. Let me know in the comments how fast you think we will see chiplet designs from Nvidia and Apple, and who will come out on top when confronted with the new reality of semiconductor manufacturing. The cards are being mixed again, and I'd like to get to know your opinion. You know what to do if you found this video interesting, and see you in the next one.